Being educated in uh, art school in England, my first uh, impression of Charles and Reams was, wow, work could look like this. And I think for me, the thing that really appealed was the, the playfulness and the seemingly naive quality. But it also connected with what I was doing and how I actually felt about making work, which was that it was something that was instantaneous and fresh and uh, could be considered as feminine, but not necessarily. I think the playful aspect, but thoughtful, was what really struck home. And the cleverness of the ideas, because the things were not only beautiful, but they were sort of resolved philosophies or ideas that were worked out and then devised into other objects or furniture or elephant toys, many wonderful things. And um, from a selfish point of view, I connected with the process of making and how I made things. And I think from observing that work, I realized that yes, I could do this with my life too and I didn't ever really realize that before. Her dress design and, and uh, these deep pockets that she had for herself so that she didn't have to carry a, a purse, that she could, she could have everything she needed for either you know, an evening out or or designing in the studio, all in these, these pockets that she had designed into her. You know, those little things give you so much insight into how she thought and how she worked. Right. Wonderful. I related to her a lot because I felt like she was a lot like me and just she kind of kept quiet and she just kind of did her own thing and you know she helped people where they needed help and everything and then um, for the London class I did a book on women in California modernism and she was one of the women that I did a lot of research on and just a lot of the things that she was interested in I kind of have interest in as well. I suppose my favorite film is Tops. Nine minutes of essential topness. You know, a top. Everybody loves tops. You, you can't help but pick it up and, and play with it, right? But it's over in an instant. And how disappointing that is. It's like, oh, okay. They have managed to make nine minutes. They made it the topness last nine minutes. There's so many stories. <laughs> I was very lucky. I'm the eldest of all the grandchildren. <laughs> so I got to be around them maybe a little bit more in, in some senses. Uh, here's one. Graduating from high school, Ray wants to buy me my first heels because I'm going to the prom. So uh, I, I fly down and uh, greeted by a car that was had a driver. And so we drove around. <laughs> And we went and I got the most glorious sparkly silver heels. I mean, they were phenomenal. I wish I had them today. So at one point, while we were being driven, now you, you could misconstrue that and think, oh, she's just sort of showing off that there's this driver. And she very pointedly told me, this is the way that I can be with you, Carla. I can have a conversation with you. I'm not worrying about where to park and being distracted, but this is really the need for this, for this little momentary day event. And so really to be able to decipher what is the need is, is um, pretty awesome.